John Foster Dulles was arguing that we should hit Red China uh -huh. uh, during the, the Kumoi Matsu uh, episode. There would, there would be many today who, who would say we should have. Well, it would be chaos. Now we know that it would have set off nuclear winter, by the way. If you hit Russia with 735 bombers uh, dropping an enormous amount of megatonnage, uh, it would not only have sent nuclear fallout over the United States, oh, of course. Uh, it would have blackened out the sun. And uh, for what period of time, with what consequences? Uh, nuclear winter, I've always uh, I've been curious about it. What do you really mean? For how long? What effect on the planet? Would we, in the United States, after attacking Russia like that, uh, living through a nuclear winter, would we survive? Well, first of all, the, the dinosaurs were killed off perhaps in a matter of maybe eight months to a year. Right. Uh, because the Commodore meteor hit the Yucatan of Mexico 65 million years ago, uh, lofting several uh, you know, cubic miles of dirt into the air, blocking out sunlight. Effectively a nuclear winter. That's right. And uh, you know, Carl Sagan had estimated that perhaps 100 megatons, uh, very little, uh, that's, that's a tiny fraction of our, of our arsenal, 100 megatons, uh, in fact, we were thinking of dropping 100 megatons in Moscow alone. Uh, 100 megatons would be enough to uh, destabilize the atmosphere. Now, the Pentagon did its own study to rebut Carl Sagan, in all fairness. Uh, they stated that you would not have a total nuclear winter, you would have nuclear autumn, said the Pentagon. In other words, crops would fail, mass famine, uh, many, many millions of people would die, but humanity would survive. Just with 100 megatons. 100 megatons, which is uh, like the tip of your finger in terms of the total arsenal. Sure. Uh, we had 30,000, 30,000 atomic and hydrogen bombs at the height of the Cold War, and, and the Russians did too. That's 60,000 uh, nuclear weapons. And we've been reducing ours at what sort of rate? What, what percentage do we have left of what we had at the height? Uh, well, you know, the strategic bombs have been uh, regulated by armed arms agreements. And so we're now down to the thousand, a few thousand, you know, uh, in about 5,000 range. So uh, it's come down from 30,000 at the height to 5,000 now. But that's strategic. We also have small tactical bombs. May I ask a, a tough question? Yeah. Go ahead. There's going to be a, a level of criticality as we continue to reduce the number of weapons on each side. At what point, Professor, does it become... Um, in the minds of somebody out there, a survivable. In other words, aren't we better having large numbers that would mean suicidal, catastrophic um, end for all? Uh, isn't it almost better that way than reducing the number to the point where somebody might consider it now something that could be done that would be something less than suicidal? Well, in the movie Doctor Strangelove, uh, you remember that there was a doomsday machine that would, if, you know, if the United States struck, then Russia would dis destroy the entire human race. Oh, how I remember, yes. Well, that doomsday machine does exist. It is uh, it nuclear does? winter. It is nuclear winter in the sense that anyone that strikes first with a strategic arsenal uh, would, would set off nuclear winter. Uh, which again would plunge humanity to the brink of, of the Stone Age. Uh, famine would break out, food riots, uh, hundreds of millions would, would die. Worldwide. worldwide. Be worldwide. Worldwide. And so um, any, any nation that, uh, either Russia or the United States, that entertains this possibility would, would plunge the world into the winter. Well, all right, let's use the uh, government's calculation of nuclear fall, you said. Well, um, uh, even if, if their estimation is true, then how many more megatons to get from fall to winter? Oh, yeah. Well, again, the, these people were estimating 100 megatons, and our, our arsenal is measured in the thousands. Uh, you realize that a, a typical bomb is one megaton, a typical bomb. Right. And we had uh, 30,000 tactical and strategic nuclear weapons. So we had not just 100 megatons, but thousands of megatons to spare. And so, in case of a full-scale war, uh, then all computer programs would say that, yeah, you're talking about something like would kill the dinosaurs. And so, you are talking about something that could afflict uh, not just, uh, you know, growing areas and farmland, but the entire population of the Earth. So, the human race itself uh, could face extinction if, uh, if a sizable fraction of these weapons were set off. Wow. 
So it's, it's very sobering. So I think the alternative, the alternative is to negotiate and bring down these numbers. Uh, right now we're in the thousands. And, uh, I guess what I was asking the professor is, wouldn't there be a level of danger when it got too low? You follow me? Well, if, uh, if it's psychology, if it sounds psychology that it's suicidal, and that's why it hasn't happened yet, then bringing it to the point where it might be slightly less than suicidal wouldn't be bright necessarily, would it? Well, uh, Robert McNamara, uh, the late uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, advocated something called minimal deterrence. That is maybe like a hundred warheads. So each side would have 100 warheads, uh, sufficient to perhaps destroy the Earth via uh, nuclear winter. And uh, that would then bring us down to a, uh, you know, a fairly low level of nuclear bombs, but sufficient, again, to cause havoc with the atmosphere and havoc on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Now, that, of course, uh, lets the cat out of the bag. These weapons are for political purposes. They're to threaten people. Yes. Uh, they're to control conventional crises. Yes. So like a poker game, uh, the, the, a nuclear winter, I mean, the first strike is a royal flush, but it's part of the continuum. So I think uh, we have to realize that the military does not see any big difference between conventional and nuclear. Nuclear is just the royal flush, that's all to them. And uh, politicians view this as a weapon of coercion. Now, the average American doesn't think that way. The average American just says, well, they hit us, we hit them back, period. That's yep. it. End of story. We're John Wayne. We never get angry. We always fire second. They don't realize that nuclear weapons, in some sense, are used every day to threaten, to like a poker game, basically, to, to threaten an enemy with a royal flush and uh, to create uncertainty in the minds of an adversary. Uh, that's why at the beginning of the Gulf War, for example, uh, uh, the first Gulf War back in 91, uh, Music Magazine uh, had a full, had a uh, big spread laying out the nuclear option, interviewing uh, senior military officials of the first Bush administration, uh, laying out the nuclear option on Iraq. Can I, can I post, post a question to you, please? Yes. Yeah. Um, let me put you in a position for a moment of being advisor to the president. Mm -hmm. And suppose the president received information that Russia was secretly planning a first strike against us. No doubt about it, it was going to happen. Would counsel a president to, under that, in that situation, uh, uh, initiate a first strike yourself before the Russians hit us, knowing full well they absolutely were going to hit us? Or would you say, no, Mr. President, uh, something's got to be left to the human race. Don't do it. Well, I would say that whoever said there's a hundred percent certainty that the Russians are planning a first strike is, is probably out of his mind. Well, because uh, Russia is in a very sad state, economically speaking. Their, their economy is in free fall. Absolutely. Basically. And uh, they can barely keep the arsenal they have intact. Uh, they cannot keep bomb scientists in Russia. But so uh, I, was in, I, I was in Russia several years ago, and. Some bomb scientists came up to me and asked me whether or not I could offer them a job. I could have hired right on the spot several top uh, Russian bomb scientists. Um, that's how bad it was. I know it's awful. I, I've been there myself. It is really awful, no question about it. Mm -hmm. um, but still... So I would counsel the president that yeah. whoever said it's 100% certainty that Russia is preparing a first strike he is out of his mind. Out of his mind. Yeah. You don't think there could have, well, I mean, but there could have been, as, as they spiraled down economically, there was that use it or lose it minute for them, or so. Had to be, right? Well, yeah, there is a use it or lose it, um, use it or lose it uh, psychology among uh, weaponeers. Yes, sir. If you wait too long, then they hit you with a first strike, and you yes. have nothing left for a second strike. Exactly. So this is called, you know, counterforce calculus. The calculus is nuclear warfare.